It is time for Stall Talk. I'm Kendra Dixon, and I'm so excited that you are here today because we're going to dig for more answers. And this week's topic is all about what is a rider supposed to do when we get a runny nose. That is a real pain when you're trying to manage reins in your hand. I, for one, feel like it's hereditary. Uh, my Nana, when I grew up, she always, she taught me this little trick. She would always wear long sleeves and she would always tuck a little Kleenex, a little tissue inside her sleeve. And now if you put on any jacket that I own, chances are it's going to be like fully prepped ahead of time. I know to prepare in the event of a runny nose. Martin Patella, life enthusiast, you were just starting to deep dive on this topic last week yeah. and we had to land the plane. So I've waited all week to get answers as to why my nose runs, especially when I'm riding a horse in the winter time. I had no idea there was such a deep connection to our overall health or how this could be a like a warning uh, sign on the dashboard for us. But but go ahead and let's just kind of pick up where we left off yeah. last week well, and think life and food a, sponsoring stall yeah. talk. Just in a quick review, I started talking about mucosal barriers your nose and your sinuses and the lungs and your mouth and your digestive system and your reproductive system are all lined with what's known as the mucosal barrier. On the outside, we have this skin that's kind of uh, hardened, protected, easy to resist influences. Whereas on the inside, if you just roll it down here on your lip, you're encountering the mucosal barrier. It's a much more permeable tissue, but in order to protect itself, it creates this layer of mucus. I mean, you Fine. encounter mucus when you try to hold a fish, mm -hmm. right? The slippery kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, all of the body parts, all of the parts of the mucosal barrier have the ability to create more mucus. And it creates more mucus when it needs to protect itself from something. Of course, the the classic one would be the cold, right? I don't know if you ever stepped outside in minus 25 to minus 40 weather. But when you do that, your nose will start running. It will just actually be running. And if you're a man, you will soon be breaking off icicles that are forming on your beard. Mm -hmm. Anyway, anybody who lived out in the cold range will know that. Anyway, um, so the body is protecting itself. So we need to give it the tools to better and more efficiently protect. Mm -hmm. And the number one ingredient is iodine. Okay. Iodine is the element that helps the body to build more resilience at the interface, at the mucosal barrier. The other thing is that, of course, an allergic reaction is a reaction essentially such that the body says, whatever's just coming at me, I'm not happy about. And you can be having an allergic food reaction. You eat something and all of a sudden you will have a belly that's swelling and you will just experience a, a rapid elimination. And it could go either backwards up out your mouth or outwards the natural direction, but you will still be getting rid of stuff really fast. Mm -hmm. The other thing that happens to people who are having allergic reactions is that they have to go uh, urinate more often, which is especially older folks know this from the evening or night where they can't go all night without getting up. Mm -hmm. And that's there's a signaling molecule. It's called histamine. And you would be familiar with histamines or antihistamines from the allergic drugstore department. Mm -hmm. right? A histamine is the body's saying, I don't like this and I want to defend against it and make something happen that's going to defend. So when you have a histamine 
reaction up in your nose, you're going to be creating more mucus. You will have a runny nose. And of course, if you have an allergic reaction, you will have it around your eyes, in your nose, and you may also experience it in the digestive system. But also, I also mentioned the urinary, right? If you if you have to pee a lot, it's strong urge to go is mm -hmm. usually associated with there being too much histamine that your okay, body's so I've never heard that. And I think some people, especially, at least for me, working outside, being so focused and passionate about what I do with horses, I don't maybe... I don't maybe pay attention to mild or moderate symptoms. They have to be pretty severe for me to actually pay attention to them. I just deal with them and rock on. I forgot to make an announcement when we first started. Bo Peterson, WPRA breakaway roper and barrel racer, was scheduled to speak today as well here on Stall Talk. She just texted last minute she won't make it, but we will reschedule Bo. Martin Patella, back to you. So. Yeah. No worries. So, okay, so I'm just describing the physiological stuff that's going on is that your body is protecting itself. Mm -hmm. It's saying there's too much ingress, right? There's, I don't know, how do we set this up? Some kind of a defense, right? Like if you have, if you have a fence that's trying to keep something out, uh, if it's too short, I then it. it's not going to keep the stuff out. If, right. So, so your body's trying to raise the fences or or thicken, I don't know, uh, what's the metaphor? Trying to catch mosquitoes with chicken wire is not going to work. Gotcha. You need a denser, thicker barrier, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, so th there we are. What is the irritant is the first thing. And what is the defense is the second thing, right? It's a balance of balance of life if your barrier is getting worn then it's going to be easier and more frequent then you're going to have that reaction mm. reactive to dog hair cat dander house dust mm -hmm. pollen of a specific plant could be cedar could be western power grass i don't know what whatever mm -hmm. any one thing right like i discovered in my well I'll, I'll i'll describe to you my progression i was a bit of a sickly kid and i would get hives from eating strawberries and then i grew out of it and i thought oh good i've grew, i've grown out of it i'm good well and then in my 20s i ended up getting poisoned with mercury thank you to uh, dr dentist that was really cool. Well, anyway, so once I poisoned my body, it started going downhill hard. And as it was breaking down, one of the things that showed up were allergies. About three or four years in after the stuff was put in my mouth. Mm -hmm. And I would, in springtime, I would be so afflicted that I wanted to gouge my eyes out. It was so unpleasant. Mm -hmm. and so of course i went to the doctor and doctor said well we have sudafed yeah. and i said well is that going to cure it and he said no you'll just be taking it for the rest of the rest of your life i didn't yeah. think that was a good idea no and sudafed doesn't work on me i happen to be allergic to um codeine and whatever's in benadryl and sudafed it mm -hmm. has the yeah. opposite effect on me so yeah. I can't just take a Benadryl and like sleep through the night. Then I'm miserable because I'm really tired, but my yeah. brain won't let me sleep. And that is tired, cool. wired. Yeah. Both stressed at the same time as you are. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I, I, I'm just trying to use my own story as an example, just so you can relate to it. And so some years in, I realized that I was actually toxic with industrial toxins and I needed to detox myself. And so I started on with, of course, the heavy metals, the mercury and all. But with it, when I did the zeolite detox and humic acid detox, all of these things that accumulated in my body started going away. And as the toxic levels were lowering, my allergies started going away. And so 
Mm. After about 10 years of doing cleansing and all of that, all of a sudden I just became not allergic to stuff. I'd like for mine to go away because it is just, it's something that I deal with year round, sometimes mm. worse than others. Yeah. And my mm. hands are busy. I am working with horses as we all are. You're yep. probably watching Stall Talk because you have horses or you want to have horses. And I know I'm not the only one that suffers from this. Yeah. So I don't um, know if we need to try and analyze you, right? One of the ways of analyzing things is to take a hair trace mineral analysis, HTMA, mm -hmm. where you snip off some about a teaspoon's worth of hair somewhere close to the skull usually under you know somewhere where you can't see it yeah that's gonna be a problem for kendra yeah well yeah we could just shave you up a wee bit <laughs> make like a little you know yeah art. yeah we'll make a little we make a little yeah i don't know what a mm -hmm. divot mm -hmm. well, well anyway so, so anyway you, you, you harvest about a teaspoon's worth of hair and send it off to the place that does the analysis and they send it back to you with, well, we have found this, 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 and this, and whatever. And but that that's simply just telling you what's wrong or what specifically. It still doesn't change anything about the fact that you still need to detoxify. So I of, often tell people, look, you can spend $150 on the analysis, or you can spend $150 on doing the detox. That makes more sense to me. So you just detox, assuming that you are toxic and you, you save yourself 150 bucks because you're going to get better anyway. And get right to the point. Mm -hmm. So that. And um, but still, to this day, I can promise you that if I eat a bunch of cheese or yogurt, dairy, because I don't do well with cows, yeah. I'll have a runny nose. It's it, it's called the post nasal drip. It mm -hmm. just out there in the back. It will just keep on going down the throat. Mm -hmm. So I know my, that my, I'm like my other. Yeah, my intolerant. other kryptonite is wheat. Okay, I don't know about wheat. I haven't paid attention to that. But for me, like I used to celebrate when I won a rodeo. On the way home, I would stop and get chocolate milk and powdered donuts. And if I did poorly at the rodeo, I would stop and drown my sorrows with chocolate milk and powdered donuts. <laughs> and <laughs> As like as the years went on, I was like, "Why am I getting so sick as I drive home? Like I am miserable." Well, what? it took me a long time to figure it out because I'm re I'm rerunning my run. Right, I'm either relishing in the victory or I'm like, "What went wrong?" I wasn't paying attention to the symptoms fast enough. I am lactose intolerant, so I do not take a bite of cheese or milk or ice cream or anything with that and i carry those little uh, lactate caplets in my pockets and handbags i've done that for years yes so that will help of course yeah mm -hmm. yeah so detox tell us about it okay so we have this thing called zeolite zeolite is a natural thing that is created when a volcano erupts under seawater and then, of course, as these things move around, it could be up on land. Most zeolite is used in industrial applications because it's not particularly clean. But it's it's used very effectively. And um, it binds metals. It binds things like lead, mercury, cadmium, um, arsenic, all kinds of stuff that your body should be without. Could so this be we, stuff that we pick up from in, being around chemicals and insecticides and fly sprays and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, all that. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a binder. And it's a good thing because it's a, it's an electrophysical reaction rather than electrochemical. There's, the, there's this thing called chelation. Chelation is an electrochemical reaction where you use chelating agents that will bind with the whatever you want out of out of your body and then it will get flushed and typically this can be done orally or through intravenous edta mm -hmm. is one of the most famous chelator agents and we do sell it we have it available available in both pills and suppositories 
suppository is in fact a very very good delivery method because whatever you insert rectally the uh, um there, there's a really good supply of blood right in your rectum and it's a very thin barrier it's Before the hemorrhoidal, that, I hemorrhoidal was complex say, so i'll take the tablet so whatever so whatever you push up into the anal area is absorbed almost as quick as putting it intravenously okay that's wild i maybe didn't know that for some people it's too much information but some of you want to know aren't you glad you're tuned into stall talk okay so zeolite it's okay so the zeolite is taken orally i assure you of that and we have it available in powder or in capsules or in liquid the most bang for your money is the powder if you want it in capsules it, you're just spending money on the encapsulation but it's still fine what does it and taste it, like repeat what does it taste like chalky okay it's powdered it's a very finely milled thing that has no particular taste okay so if you want to save money want the biggest bang for the buck yeah. get over the taste drink yeah. the powdery chalky stuff well i don't like a runny nose so i'm you're, you're I'm almost ready you're almost face. ready almost ready to try yeah yeah mm. Yeah, so as we lower the, the toxic burden, the immune system strengthens. Like my, my own experience was such that uh, after a few years of detoxing, my liver finally stopped being overwhelmed, right? It's the liver that is involved in de detoxification. It's the methylation, right? Methylation is the process by which the liver will neutralize toxic things. But when it's too busy doing other things it just doesn't have the energy or spare spare time to do it <laughs> mm. i think that's a strong correlation for a lot of different things it's yeah. making me think about horsemanship when we're too busy you said lowering the toxin burden helps our immune system come up well guys when you lower the the activity and the burden and the stress on your horse it gives the good things time to develop. Yes. Yeah, very good analogies. Yeah, okay. So there's the zeolite. Humic acid is great to take along with that because it will help to balance that or, or support the terrain in the gut so that it's not being breached by all the stuff that you eat. Okay. One of the worst things that has happened to us in the last 20 some years was the introduction of glyphosate round, roundup okay. the chemical companies have told the farmers that it's all fine it's all good don't you worry about it roundup was originally patented as an antibiotic the way it works it kills the microbes that live at the rhizome at the root of the plant so the plant stops being able to absorb nutrients and it withers mm -hmm. when you do the same thing to the human body by ingesting food such as wheat or lentil or garbanzo bean that has been sprayed with this thing you get only a microscopic dose it doesn't really kill you as a human but what it does it creates this killing field in your gut it's killing the microbes being an antibiotic well okay so can i stop you real quick because i have there's obviously a debate there's pros and cons right as a as a land management system we use roundup we use it here on the place but you're telling me that i don't necessarily have to handle that product but what i buy at the store likely has you know been in contact and i'm yeah, going to get it a gets, well, it gets less get fun to our yeah. horses if our horses graze that field which where we use roundup um my horses don't have access to but yeah. you know it's just one field over so yeah. what is that potentially doing to their gut health because i believe everyone on this zoom will agree it appears that we're seeing more gut health issues in horses than we have um in decades past ronnie am i right about that or is it just that it's education and awareness now let's say yes 
Well, I think, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. it gets, yeah, it gets less fun, uh, Kendra, for the following reason. Many uh, herbicides are not water soluble. No, no. But Roundup is. Okay. Roundup dissolves and gets into your groundwater. It runs off into your creek and it runs off down into your aquifer, wherever that is. So if your if your well is somewhere downstream from wherever you're spraying, whether it's you or your neighbor or whoever, it gets in there. These days, it's been analyzed and found that it's raining Roundup in the United States because mm -hmm. it evaporates with water right. and it's it's everywhere. It's in yeah. the cycle. So even a organic field is now being rained on Roundup. Okay. It's it's not a good thing. You okay. you have been you have been sold the product as safe by people who are interested in selling it. Mm -hmm. But as in many things, this this philosophy of plunder, you know, plunder comes into the village and uh, kills the men, rapes the women, and steals the cattle. Doesn't care what happens next year. Burns the field. Mm -hmm. That's the plunder. When, mm -hmm. when the plunderer shows up in America, he just kills the buffalo, plows under the prairie, and goes on, right? Mm -hmm. It's an unsustainable model of living. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, we need to figure out some ways to manage our weed or the unwanted plant mm -hmm. in a way that mm -hmm. doesn't create a downstream problem. Roundup, unfortunately, is very, very... Okay, so a gift I that have, keeps on giving is let me put it that way. I live on a ranch where we use Roundup. I yeah. have been, you know, um, <laughs> showered oh. by various brands of fly spray my entire life. Uh, yeah. Flea shampoos for dogs. Um, I'm around cleaning chemicals. You know, there's there's all kinds of stuff that we yep. in our Western lifestyle we we yep. use. Um, yeah. So, and I do, I, I suffer, from, and this is so weird. I saw somebody on TikTok, I think it was last night. She's kind of funny, but she's like, she's like, when you people complain about bloating, she goes, I understand you feel bloated. It's uncomfortable, like a little bit. She goes, look at this. And she raised up her sweatshirt and she's like, when I bloat, I bloat. That's me. Yep. So, is this you know, from, from decades of my, my mucosal linings breaking down in my digestive system. And mm -hmm. what can I now do, even if it takes me 10 years to turn the tide, you know, with zeolite, how is that just from now on? Is that a product? Well, so zeolite binds the industrial toxins, heavy metals, that would be lead, mercury, cadmium, uranium, all the stuff that comes from guns and brake pads on the cars. And uh, and it, it deals with uh, chemicals, like the cleaning chemicals you're talking about, you know, the uh, I forget, tetrachlor, or I don't know what stuff that you might have sitting around, paint thinners and the likes. It's good for that. But it won't touch the Roundup problem. Okay. The Roundup problem is it's transient, it's repairable, but it, you need to essentially stop the flow of it. Mm -hmm. It comes with the grain if the grain was sprayed. It comes with the lentils if the lentils were sprayed. It comes with walking on the ground that was sprayed and so on. So it, it just gets into the environment. Mm -hmm. Here, here's, here's an analogy for you. If a human were a plant, the soil would arrive through the mouth into the pipe that runs between your mouth and your anus. The, the pipe that runs through you, about this diameter, 
That's the outside running through the middle of you. The best example I could give you is an earthworm, right? That's a straight line. Well, we're a little more complicated, but the outside is inside of me. And in the small intestine, there are villi that are illustrated like this, right? Little things that look like fingers, if except they're tiny. Uh -huh. And they would be like the roots of the plant that would be reaching into the soil that is brought in fresh every day so that the nutrients can be extracted by the gut into through the villi into the bloodstream. Uh -huh. So whatever happens on the root side of things, which would be the gut stuff, the stuff we ingest, if we ingest chlorine, drinking in chlorinated water, we're killing the microbes. If we ingest industrial drugs, whether they are ibuprofen or Tylenol or you name it, whatever, those are those are toxic things that you're throwing into the mix. Right? Uh -huh. Antibiotics, of course, they, they even have it in their name. They kill life. Mm -hmm. Well, and Roundup is an antibiotic. Mm -hmm. So all of that is going to be killing the life within you so that it can no longer do what it's meant to do. That's the problem. And over time, that's when we see it. Well, and now I'm just starting to connect the dots with horses and gut health and there's yeah. so many companies like ADM Forage First that I wanted to pick Bo's brain today because she's an ADM rider. She mm -hmm. feeds ADM Forage First Feed. They are, you know, all about the horse first. They talk a lot about gut health. We heard multiple top 15 athletes at the NFR who also ride uh, with ADM and they feed their products. They talked about the gut gut health benefits so what do we know about their products that uh, that we can say is it grown on fields that are free of what well if it's if it's raining roundup it might not it might be a moot there point levels of things right like if it's raining right around roundup it's a microgram in a drop uh -huh. when you take a watering can and pour a gallon of it on an acre it's a whole different story gotcha right gotcha. well and i'm new to adm so i'm i am learning these things let's find out pictures. yeah well, let's find out i would i would venture to guess is that that this guess that they probably go more organic or biodynamic than not mm -hmm. that they would probably use natural ways rather than industrial uh, toxic ways like there are many ways i mean you once you discover this uh, soil method that they call regenerative agriculture mm -hmm. which is going back to the pre-industrial age where we did crop rotation and where we planted this with that like plant your bean that's going to put nitrogen back in the soil and there's a whole lot of agriculture know-how that's there that uh Mm -hmm. It can be learned. I this is not my expertise, but I'm somewhat aware. Yeah, nor nor is it mine. I mean, I I I know a little bit about small management, so the benefits of having like guineas and chickens and ducks to like aerate your your land, but yep. you can't you can't do that if you're managing three thousand acres. Right. Like that's, yeah, not... that's that's the industrial scale that has brought us to phenomenally inexpensive food, and we're getting about as much as what we're paying for it. Mm -hmm. I guess that I, I, just to be really clear, today the food is cheaper than it's ever been, but its value is also less mm -hmm. because there's not stuff in it that should be, and there's stuff in it that shouldn't. And think of how many people that can't, like, there is not an option. You have no way to source your own food. You are dependent on the chain. Like, yes. we don't live that way anymore. Society has evolved. And it's interesting. I was listening to um, Stephen S. Hoffman. They call him Captain Hoff. And he talked about what is coming in the next 30 years, guys. 
we think it's amazing that a phone could be in the room and, oh, wow, it must be listening to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. like we're get ready because that's just the beginning. Like that is such a teeny tiny thing. They're, they're so far ahead of us, guys, and, and being able to print food. I didn't know that. They can print food, the um, not natural. So it's, it's not going to be real chicken. It's not going to be real beef. That is yeah. all in the future because we have gotten away from sourcing our own food. Yeah. You know, when I think of that future, uh, I think that future is going to be a dead end. Well, uh, anyway, that's about, that's my yeah. opinion. He anyway, one one day, one day, one day you fall. should try. Yeah, one day yeah. you should try and look up Dr. Zach Bush, Z A H B U S H. He is he's lectured many times. I don't know if he'd take the time to talk to our little group, but his lectures are on his lectures are on YouTube, and he's very eloquent, and he explains the futility of fighting nature instead of harmonizing with it. Mm -hmm. He does mm -hmm. a very good job of it. Um, yeah, so this guy was talking about people that they want to ship to Mars and have and let the human race evolve to where it can, you know, have be sure. able to exist on Mars. It's a six month trip just to get there. And they talk about how miserable the first humans there are going to be. Who would sign up for that? But to to let that's what their plan is. It's crazy, guys. Like here, Lori and I are sitting over here with the Stall High app going. Woo, we are running with technology <laughs> and like the, the ability to measure, review my ride and the physics of it and kind of dipping our toe in the, the water of neuroscience. And there's a whole other world out there. Like there's a whole other, you know, percentage of the population so far ahead of us that it is, it's pretty mind blowing. So we, even though these are hard conversations to have guys, and you may be listening now, or you may be listening to a replay and you may immediately get defensive because you've been using Roundup for however many years and it serves you well. There's, there's nothing wrong with having the conversation. And we do need to think beyond our own 3000 acres or three acres. I don't know how much you own. Yep. That's a moot point. We are, we are a community, we are a society, we are a nation, and um, I, for one, love the learning process more than I ever have before. So, so okay, so restoring the health in the gut. We were talking about get becoming very bloated, and the bloat is essentially the effect of many, many micro injuries. If you could visualize hitting your thumb with a hammer, the next thing that happens is it's going to swell up and be throbbing and uh, be unusable, mm -hmm. right? Which is redness, heat, swelling, and loss of function, plus pain. Mm -hmm. So if this same sort of an injury were happening inside your gut, because you're pushing stuff into your gut, that's... Let's just visualize a billion tiny little hammers hitting every single cell in your gut. Mm -hmm. Each one of them responding the same way as your thumb did by redness, swelling, heat, pain, and loss of function. And the, the swelling is essentially water rushing in so that we can try to repair stuff. Right? Mm -hmm. Like if I punch you in your face, it will swell up, right? Yeah. No, so that's okay. happening internally so and inside we, our gut. is that our our stomach bloats yeah, which that's because your that's because your small intestine is taking on water in response to the injuries and so you're going from flat belly to six months pregnant inside of four yeah. hours yeah, yeah. and yeah. i i for one prefer the flat belly especially well, when of I'm course you do. <laughs> sign of health but there, there, there's the thing, right? The micro injury was caused by whatever happened only an hour earlier. Mm -hmm. Fast, it does happen fast. So, um, Zeolite, we can find that on Life Enthusiast. Yes, ma'am. 
And that's something that we stay on long term or supplement. Well, so what when I was first doing the detox, I was taking a dose that was like zeolite. You pee it out every four hours or so. It doesn't stay in your body very long. So I was taking a dose every you know morning, lunch, dinner, bedtime, on and on and on, all the time. Mm -hmm. These days, I just take one capsule in the morning as my insurance policy because I know that I still ingest, you know, I go eat some fish. If I eat tuna, I know I'm getting mercury. Mm -hmm. If I get in the car and drive in city traffic, I know I'm getting brake pads, metal dust. I'm inhaling that because every time you break, you're just wearing the metal. That's it. We have tractors and diesel and like there's yeah. there's just there's generations of grime on every piece of equipment we own. <laughs> right. yeah. 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 So it, yeah, you go day. you go handle you go handle aluminum pipe, right? For yeah. irrigation. You come home shiny. Well, guess what? You have just absorbed a whole bunch of aluminum. Your body needs to deal with it. Mm -hmm. hmm. Um hmm. if zeolite doesn't detox the roundup is there anything that does you need to restore the balance humic acid which is the essence of dirt is what we need to supplement and then we humic have i didn't humic hear acid. humic h-u-m-i-c h-u-m-i-c it got its name from humus which is essentially the stuff the difference between desert and soil is humus mm -hmm. compost Martin, what's what is is that similar to diatomaceous earth no ma'am diatomaceous earth is a silica those are the skeletons of diatoms though that's a wonderful thing it provides you with bulk and it's also very sharp edged so it also will chop up all of the parasites that are trying to take hold in your gut. So diatomaceous earth is a good thing. By the way, the uh, there's a product in uh, Life Enthusiast uh, called Strataflora, okay. which is a rebuild your gut. And it has diatomaceous earth and probiotics and prebiotics and great many other things. So for people who are suffering with a broken elimination or digestion elimination, they will find quite a bit of comfort with that. So will that help me? Yeah. Well, we need to de we need to detox you with zeolite, and we need to push the stratoflora on you, and okay. we probably need to put humic acid into your daily routine. Okay. And I know it's hard to give me like a an exact time frame. But when I do these things, will I notice a difference in 90 days? Is it going to take six months? What is that? Yeah. What is that uh, turnaround? Well, we, we estimate that it takes about a week of repairs for every year that you were damaging. So you probably have about a 30 weeks worth of uh, recovery. Of which, you know, when you look back from four weeks in, you say, I'm better now. And when you look back from 12 weeks in, you'll say, oh, I'm way better now. So it's it's a gradual, right? I mean, as as you go downhill, you go in. It's not it's never a straight line. It's just you go and you say at 25, I was this. And at 35, something happened, some kind of an event, something, whatever. And life was worse since then and Disrupted. a certain ability was lost and yep. then something happens at i don't know what number 47 i don't know mm -hmm. and boom you go through a gate it feels like a one-way ticket all of mm -hmm. a sudden something isn't like it used to be anyway so we can rebuild we can come back up and it also doesn't happen in straight line it's build up something lost, build up more something lost. It's three steps forward, one step back kind of thing. But we do get a lot of function back when we start doing the right stuff. Well, and before we click live and went on to multiple platforms today, we were mm -hmm. talking about 
how cool it is to learn more about our brain and dip our toe into neuroscience. And I'd heard a an audio book this morning just talk about the size of the room matters, depending on what kind of task you're working on when you want to be real creative and you want things to flow and you have like you want to dream big and set big goals, go outside or be in a big open space with a high ceiling. Scientific, they have done studies on this, so they have proof, uh, research to prove it. Well, when you want to be more detail oriented and task focused, if you'll get in a space with a lower ceiling and things are a little bit closer, that changes your productivity because it changes your mind. Yeah. And you had said, we really have more control than we think. And that's the way we end this session. We do have more control than we think. I don't have to live with this little tissue. I don't have to repeat my Nana's life cycle and carry a little, you know, security tissue with me all the time. I, that's a pain. It's a real pain when you're on camera and you're riding a horse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to mention, I, I said before, pH balance on the inside. This is the uh, acidity, which causes the anxiety or the alkalinity, which may cause depression. We control that with our food inputs, depending on our metabolic type. Either the fat is calming or the starches are calming or vice versa. You need to figure yourself out, each of you individually. It's not mm -hmm. universal. It's like left-hand drive, right-hand drive. I can't tell you which you are. You need to figure out. But once you know, uh, if you're anxious, you're overly acidic. You can undo that. Dr. Martin, do you believe that us that deal with horses and animals a lot, that we could possibly have parasites? Yeah, parasites, are, parasites are really a big deal. We all should be deworming twice a year, spring and fall. That's a good question. When you tie calves enough with a pig and string and you mm -hmm. tie enough of them oh. down. Oh. oh, I just got that yeah. visual. Yep, buddy. That is a fact. Yeah. Are you around cattle enough and do what we've done? You yeah. learn mm -hmm. to keep your mouth shut. Yes, ah. or yes sir. That's a fact. Yes, sir. There, there's, there's this <laughs> lovely thing called ivermectin, which yeah. has got so much press lately. It's and it does so <coughs> we use it <laughs> so i have a question about that just real quick and maybe you can answer this maybe not but someone had brought that up recently and they take the liquid form because they trust the concentration to be the same but they said if you take the tube and you're administering a tiny drop at a time you may not get the same uh yeah may not get yeah. the same dose it may not be distributed in that paste the same a horse right. would probably take the whole slug and so they're gonna get it but if i'm just doing a dollop a day <laughs> nope. a little dab will do you yeah. i may not or... be getting a consistent dose okay what people don't what people don't understand about ivamec it was designed for humans in the beginning mm -hmm. yes sir <laughs> It is not that yeah, America, out. as in the United States, is yeah. the exception in the world because it's so controlled by the pharmaceutical industry. Right. Everywhere mm -hmm. else on the planet, it's over the counter, and you want some, come get it. Yep. Just just south in Mexico, you just walk into any drugstore and pick it up. Um, as far as the homogeneity of the product, which is that's the issue here. Um, yeah, okay, it's easier to make liquids more homogeneous than paste. Or or just take it once a month. You don't need to take it every day. It's a silly thing to be hitting yourself all the time. Well, I, I took say, it every day during COVID. As, uh, no, I would as still as do once a month, 12 okay. milligram for a human. 12 mil. The well, whatever the veterinarian tells you to give to a horse, which uh -huh. would be tw a 1,200 pound animal. Well, take a tenth of that as a 120 pound animal, you'll be fine. Okay. One, one cc per 100 pounds. One cc per 100 pounds. That's about yeah. how you'd figure it. We yeah. get ours, we get ours, it's a vet at Borica. And it, he has his compounded and it is a liquid. Mm -hmm. And you just pull it up in a syringe uh, and yeah, squirt it. You got, you got it on the, on the, syringe you got how many cc milligram 
feces it is, this, yeah. and I, we didn't even shoot it in your mouth. His is has an apple flavor to it. Uh, you can put it in, you can just squirt it in your mouth or put it in a soda pop or coffee or something and drink it. Yeah. Uh, works pretty good. I want to make sure that the public knows if you're watching now or replays, I'm not a doctor. No, I'm not a doctor either. Talk no, to your veterinarian. So we're not giving you medical uh, prescriptions or subscription. We're just sharing stories about what we do and what we've heard other people do. So it is completely your choice to make. But we do want you to be a more educated horse owner and a more educated rider. So that you can be a better steward of your horse. And that means taking care of yourself, too. And that's what we're all about in 2023 so that we can rodeo stress free. It, it's a pretty lofty goal, guys. But like Martin just said, we control more than we realize. And we don't have to put up with um, things that stall us. You're, you're really not stalled physically as much as you think you are. There are answers. And when you have the answers, it makes things... Um, mm, yeah, your horse is probably more intuitive. Yeah, your horse is probably more intuitive than you are. So if you do what the horse wants to do, you'll probably end up in a better place. Hmm. Well, you definitely made us think through situations. And now I'm thinking like how much contact of my horses that have had gut issues over the years, how much contact did they have with ground, soil, you know, plants, hay, stuff like that, that... Uh, yeah. And I'm going to go talk. I'm going to have a conversation with Chad tonight and find out like, what are we spraying the fields with? Because our coastal mm -hmm. hay is kicking. Like we make really good hay, but now I have to think all the way through that system. Right. Is it, so what is, is it a toxic what's hay? What's the or downside? Is it, is it, does it have toxins? If so, how much and how much is that affecting my horse's performance? And I haven't even considered it. So yeah. this was a great talk, Martin. I appreciate your, uh, your expertise. Every every week, we appreciate you supporting Stall High with life enthusiasts. Guys, if you are watching right now and you want to learn more about Martin Patella, and if you want to seek his advice for you personally, there is a there's a system where people can download that. They can they can go through a diagnostic tool with you. They can be coached by you personally. You have an amazing website full of natural options. Um, so that we can restore and regain our health. And it's wonderful. We appreciate what you're doing and what you've committed your life to doing. We're going to drop the link. So if you have any questions, guys, look at the link below. It's life-enthusiast.com. Ronnie, Patricia, Lori, Lori, thank y'all for being here. Kevin, this is a good talk. Good talk. All righty, guys. Thank you so much for being part of Stall Talk. If your horse is physically healthy, and still not working, and you can't figure out why, we're here to help you. That's what we really want to accomplish at, at Stall High. That's why we created the online mentor program where you can either watch hundreds of hours in the training library at a DIY pace, or you can attend one class per week, pick your pro, or you can come to unlimited classes per week. They're live every night at 6 p.m. Ronnie Clampett right there is our coach on Friday. We have an amazing team of mentors to help you get to the root reason of why your horse is not responding to your hands. It's typically going to have a mechanical deficit somewhere. There's a mechanical reason to it, but more times than not, it has had a mental impact and how severely depends on the circumstance and the horse, and a whole lot of things. You can't, you can't just slap a Band-Aid on it. That's what I got to. I'd, I'd purchased so many Band-Aids in my, my horse career that I was going nowhere. And it was expensive, and it was very frustrating. And that's when one person challenged me to rethink everything I was doing about barrel racing. She pulled me out of the, the flow of the majority, and she said, stop listening to people, stop following the crowd, start listening to your horse and that's when my life changed and that's when this cool horse came along and helped us get in the top 15 more than I ever thought was possible so I love telling those stories if you want to learn more 
download the Stall High app. Look us up, info at stallhigh.com. My team and I are here to help you have a great next ride. Y'all have a great afternoon. I'll see you tonight at six o'clock in the interactive group.